Once upon a time, there was a town in southeastern Washington called White Bluffs. It had an ice cream parlor, gas station, ferry landing, football team, and barber shop. Then, in 1942, White Bluffs suddenly disappeared. Well, in 1942, the war was going very badly for the Allies. The Japanese had made a series of very quick attacks after Pearl Harbor. Within six months, they had captured about four-fifths of the Pacific area. Europe was totally controlled by the Nazis, except for England. At that dark hour, Top U.S. scientists had reason to believe Germany was working on an atomic bomb. America had to get one first. Okay, but what's that got to do with White Bluffs? A tiny town on a big river in the middle of nowhere. It turns out that is exactly what the Pentagon was looking for. 600 square miles of land far from any city. This was the place to produce plutonium. The residents got letters in the mail the very first week of March, and it said that they would have to vacate. Some were told they had to leave within two weeks. What came next was Hanford, an atomic boomtown. Thousands of people answered the call for war workers out west. The first job was to build tents, trailer parks, barracks, huts, and homes for 4,000 women and 47,000 men. It was gigantic and it was unbelievable. Larry Denton was one of those men. He would go on to become a big boss at Hanford. But in 1942, he was a teenage shipping clerk, getting an education. You'd get a few beers in him and pretty soon they'd be throwing a pitcher of beer at somebody and the fire department would come in and hose him down with a fire hose. And it became clear workers needed something to do on their one day off. The government built baseball diamonds, dance halls, bowling alleys, pool halls, theaters. Then once the secret city was up and running, it was time to change history. No one had ever in the history of the world created a site where you produced large quantities of uranium fuel rods then loaded them into reactors, irradiated them, loaded them out of the reactor, and then separated the plutonium out of those rods and made a product. Analyzing that product was important work, not the kind of job Marge de Goyer expected when she followed her parents to Hanford. Marge never got a chance to tell the woman in personnel she wanted to be a secretary. So I sat down and the very first question she asked me was, well, would you rather cook or sew? Cook or sew? I said, I don't like to do either one, but I guess I would rather cook. So that got me into the analytical lab. Marge worked in Tea Plant, a massive complex with a canyon-like interior filled with 40 tanks. At the end of a long process, chemists brought Marge a concentrated sample. We didn't wear gloves because they didn't think we could pipette with the little pipettes well enough with gloves on. So we'd get our hands all contaminated. But contaminated with what? Marge had no idea. Neither did Larry Denton, who shipped products between reactors, tea plant, and the outside world. Did you feel you were not allowed to try to piece it together and figure out what was going on? Oh, yes. Yeah. Was, Tell me about that. I was told just to do your job and shut up. Hanford was a city of 50,000 workers who had no idea what they were working on. The only people who were allowed to put the pieces together were nuclear scientists. And that's just what they did. They took plutonium from Hanford to New Mexico to see if it would do this. Back in Hanford, the workers were unaware they had fueled the world's first atomic bomb. That is, until America dropped the second one on Hiroshima, Japan. Having found the bomb, we have used it. We have used it against those who attack us without warning at Pearl Harbor. 
uh, we'd look at one another and say, good God, what did you know? So we're riding on the bus out to Two West, and this guy jumps up in the middle of the bus, and he says, plutonium, plutonium. Now I can say it out loud. That's the first time I heard the word. A few days later came Nagasaki, and Hanford workers learned they built the core of the bomb that ended World War II. Oh yeah, there were prayer vigils for the uh, uh, victims of the bomb. And at uh, the same time, there were parties and jubilation that uh, the war is over. More than 60 years later, people are still talking about the cost of that peace, especially here where chemicals poison the Columbia River, and Hanford workers continue to get sick, including Marge de Goyer, who has suffered multiple cancers. I might have had a better health life if I had not worked there, but I was proud that what, what we accomplished. Marge and other Hanford pioneers will tell you they built a weapon of war to keep America free. And freedom sometimes calls for sacrifice. Just ask the residents of White Bluffs, the little town that changed the world.